My name is Monica Ramirez, and I am the founder and president of Justice for Migrant Women, along with the Latinx House, and I'm co-founder of Poderistas and Alianza Nacional de Campesinas. Some of the racial nuances that affect public health outcomes that the average person might not think about are things like whether or not someone is believed by their health professionals. I believe that people of color and racial minorities are often not deemed credible, even by the people that we seek help from. And I think that that is because there is automatic bias against certain people in our country and in particular people of color. The other reality is that people of color in our country, because of racial bias and discrimination, don't receive the same kind of quality care that we should. In our communities, we often wait much longer to seek medical help. In some cases, it's because we don't have insurance or we don't have money or we're worried about taking time to go to the doctor because that means taking time away from work. And the inability to feel like we can actually go to the doctor to seek help when we are sick. When I think about racism as a public health crisis, to me, it means that in order for us to actually better the health outcomes for people of color in our country, that means that we have to start doing the work to change the narratives about our communities and to shift the culture as it pertains to people of color in this nation. We have to do work with people about their blind spots and their biases. I believe if we treat racism as a public health crisis in this country, we would see radical transformational change at a speed that is unparalleled to anything that we've seen before. But because we don't treat racism as a public health issue, change has been slow over time. And some people have been able to discredit or to not believe individuals when we talk about racism and the experiences that we've had with racism. And when you pretend like something isn't real and you don't take it seriously, that allows it to fester, to grow and to impact more people. We need to treat racism as the public health crisis that it is. It is costing people their lives, literally, from being shot and killed on the street to being mistreated or not treated by healthcare professionals and a range of other issues. One of the ways that our organization treats racism as a public health crisis relates to the treatment of migrant women in this country. One of the key issues that migrant women face in our country is sexual violence against them. And the sexual violence is carried out against them in the workplace, in their homes, in migration, and in other places in the community. And far too often, when survivors come forward and disclose sexual violence against them, they are not believed, they are interrogated, they are treated like they have done something wrong. They often do not receive the quality care that they need. We try to raise awareness not only about this issue, but about the need to ensure that survivors of sexual violence, including migrant women, are receiving holistic care and treatment. Growing up in rural America, specifically in Ohio, I think that I was able to see racism firsthand because we were one of few Latino families in the community where I live. It's a place where at one time in the, in the history of this city, there were signs on storefronts and in restaurants that said no Mexicans allowed. Thankfully, over time, there have been changes. There aren't no Mexicans not allowed signs in the storefronts anymore but there still are signs of racism and there still is racial hostility in this city where I live 
and across the country. And I'm fortunate that I get to do work to try to eradicate this racism. And we are so grateful to have partners like the YWCA to work with to stand against racism.